Welcome to video number three in a series of videos that I have entitled Configuring Emacs. And for those of you that have been following along thus far, I have created a repository over on my GitLab at gitlab.com slash dwt1. Look for a repo called Configuring Emacs. And in this repository, I'm going to have a, a directory for each video in the series. There's video number one, there's video number two, and if you click on them, you will find the configuration files as they existed when I recorded that video. So be sure to check that out if you need the configs. Now up front, I do want to warn you, today's video, we are going to add a ton of stuff to this configuration file, and I'm going to move along rather quickly. I'm not going to go into great detail on a lot of what I do today. I, you'll get a, a general overview on every little bit of functionality I add to the configuration, but I can't spend a lot of time detailing every little minutia uh, because it's one of these things this video is going to be very long as it is and if i really spent time detailing every little thing that i add to the config this video that i'm making right now seriously would be a multi-hour video because that's how much stuff we're really about to add to this config because we need to speed things along right now as our emacs configuration exists it's working but it still leaves a lot to be desired so today i'm going to add a lot of really important functionality that i think most of you guys are going to want to so let me switch over to my desktop and let me go ahead and launch emacs i'll launch the emacs client and i'm going to do space fc now that is a key binding i added in the last video space fc for find my config.org right space fc uh, yeah, that you could set that to anything but i just found that uh, it would be convenient to have a key binding to quickly get us to the config.org since we're going to be doing so much with it until we finally get this configuration somewhat complete now the first thing i want to do is i want to add ivy and council now council is a part of ivy ivy is a completion framework for emacs and that's one of the things i really miss not using doom emacs anymore right doom emacs had uh, ivy and council built into it and it had a really neat uh, find recent file command you would do space fr in doom emacs for find your recent files and give you a list of all the the files you've worked in recently basically your history so i really want to get ivy installed and i'll try to keep these top level headings alphabetical ivy starts with an i so it will go right in front of org mode right so let's go ahead and i'm just going to paste a rather large block of text here but i'm going to talk you through exactly what some of this stuff is so i'm going to install ivy which installs actually a ton of programs that are part of the ivy completion mechanism for emacs you can see ivy is a generic completion mechanism for emacs and it has several built-in programs along with it including council which is a collection of various programs it's a collection of iv enhanced versions of common emacs commands common emacs functions and then i'm also going to install a third party package that's not part of iv but it extends iv in some ways it's iv rich which allows us to add descriptions alongside our commands when we do the uh, meta x command which right now meta x doesn't give us a list of programs it doesn't give us the names it doesn't give us the descriptions it's just an empty prompt meta x what are you looking for right and you can start typing it would have tab complete so if i did find and then tab you know I, I will get some suggestions but it would be nice if i would get those kinds of suggestions you know out of the box and if you want to read more about iv and all the things that are built into iv including council you can go to their github so uh, it is this GitHub page here, which I will link, uh, the repo is actually called Swiper, although Swiper is, it, the program is called IV, Swiper is part of IV, that's an IV enhanced alternative to iSearch, we won't be playing with Swiper today, but really I wanted IV and Council, and then IV Rich. I will also link to their GitHub. There's not much to Ivy Rich. Basically, you install it and you turn it on. So what we're going to do here is I forget this source code block, right? It's an ELISP source code block. And to install Council, we're just going to do a use package Council. And then we're going to do colon after. So after means load this program after this other program has already loaded. So it needs to start after Ivy is loaded. And then under the configuration options, we're just going to 
run council dash mode. So that's just a, a very basic configuration block, a use package block for council. Next up, uh, something similar for Ivy, and this is ripped straight from their GitHub practically, right? This is just some suggested configuration options that they suggest. For example, uh, we have bindings. They suggest a couple of key bindings for important IV programs. Now, I, I'm going to go ahead and set these bindings. I'm never going to use them. But for those of you that like GNU Emacs styled key bindings, such as Control C, Control R, Control X, Capital B, you know, I'm going to leave these here as example code. But if I was actually going to use these particular IV related programs, I would probably add some key Key bindings up in the general uh, key binding section of my config and actually do something with a proper leader key like space you know I do space IR or, or whatever it happens to be for IV resume for this particular function which I made a note here IV resume it resumes the last IV based completion then I assign some values to these variables here under the custom section and these were suggested defaults from the IV github and these variables IV use virtual buffers so what this is set to true use virtual buffers so when you're searching through buffers using IV the IV completion framework it can actually search buffers that you've actually closed essentially because it keeps the history of things I'm pretty sure that's what the uh, use virtual buffers variable is doing IV count format when you're looking at things through IV and some of the council related programs it's going to show you a count of you know the matches when you're doing a search and then enable recursive mini buffers that's set to true so if you already have something going on in a mini buffer and then you uh, run a program that also needs a mini buffer I believe that will it enables you to have more than one mini buffer I'm assuming is what that is actually I'm not sure we could actually look that up remember all the help functions that we set key bindings for so if I actually did a space HV for variable because these are all variables you know they're variables because we're using set Q set Q assigns a value to a variable and let's actually read what the enable recursive mini buffers function does and it says a, a non nil value, a true value, means we're allowing mini buffer commands while in the mini buffer. So if the mini buffer is already active, we can still use the mini buffer for other things. So yeah, that's what I was assuming that was about. And then finally, under the use package block for IV, we have the config section where we just turn on IV mode, similar to what we did in council under the config. Turn on council mode. And then finally, I wanted to use IV Rich. IV Rich is going to give us some nice uh, bling to our IV and council programs. Really what I wanted is I wanted icons <laughs> in my uh, council commands, my council recent elf command for find recent files. So this block here, use package IV Rich. Again, check out their GitHub. Most of this stuff I just ripped straight from the GitHub. You know, these were suggested settings. And it's gonna load IV Rich after IV and then on the init IV rich mode one it basically turns on IV rich mode if this was set to negative one it would turn it off and this use package block that I had right before it use package all the icons IV rich will give us icons on the buffers that use IV rich of course we need to install a package to go along with this because right now we don't have any icon packs installed inside Emacs. The most common one is actually a package called all the icons. So actually, let me zoom out. We pretty much did everything with Ivy and Council. So that is that block, but I should go ahead and add the all the icons package as well. So I'm actually going to scroll back up and I'll just add it right here in front of fonts. Let's create a new heading. All the icons. I'll zoom back in here and I'll just go ahead and paste this here. So all the icons is pretty straightforward. I'm going to do a use package block to install. One unusual part about this use package block is we have colon if and then we have display dash graphic dash P. I believe this is referring to are we using the graphical version of Emacs, the GUI version of Emacs, which of course we're going to be using most of the time. Typically the only time you would use the terminal version of Emacs is if you were forced to use Emacs in a TTY where you didn't have a proper display server, you know, then you wouldn't probably have access to, to cool graphics, for example, like all the icons. And there's actually a separate package from all the icons called all the icons dash dear ed, 
which gives you icons in the Dear Ed file manager. So I went ahead and added this use package block to install that. So that's a lot of stuff we are going to install right away to give us council and IV and our find recent files command and then adding some bling with descriptions and icons because we installed the all the icons icon pack. So let's see if any of this actually works. So I'm actually going to do an escape. Let's do a colon W to write that. And remember the key binding that we added in the previous video to do a hot restart, a hot reload. So space H R R and the Alpaca package manager is installing a lot of programs. And let's see if that actually works. I'm going to do a control WV for a vertical split. Remember, I also did this with space WV would also do the same thing depending on well, which key bindings you want to use. Now I'm going to do a meta X and I'm just going to type dear Ed. And we already know that uh, IV and Council and IV Ridge and all of that did get installed properly along with the all the icons because we got icons. Uh, we get our descriptions as a part of the suggestions here for Meta X as well. I do get this annoying caret symbol in front of Dear Ed. The caret symbol specifies it's the beginning of a string. So it's finding everything that actually begins with the search string Dear Ed. So uh, I don't like that. I would like it to actually find every file that contains the string Dear Ed, whether it's the beginning of the function name or not, but I'll change that in a minute. Right now I'm just going to launch Dear Ed, give it a directory, I'll give it my home directory, and there is all the icons in Dear Ed. So makes that file manager just look that much nicer. Let me do space BK for buffer kill. I'll do space WC for window close. Uh, that did not work. I wonder why that did not work. Let's do uh, control WC for window close. I don't think I ever added the uh, space related key bindings for the windows space WV for vertical split space WC for close. So I, I thought I added those on the last video, but I must not have. So we'll add those in just a second. But at least we've got council and IV, all the icons. Uh, but we need some key bindings because now what I want to do is I want to go back up here uh, to make this a, a little more readable. I'm actually going to turn off the truncated lines. Remember the uh, uh, last video I did space T T for truncated lines. And now, yeah, I turned off truncated lines. So the lines actually run off the end of the page here. But that's uh, what I want, at least for right now, just so this is a little easier to read what I'm about to do. I'm going to do space F R for the uh, find recent files command and the actual command that we're going to use will be part of council part of IV it's going to be council dash recent F and then colon WK for which key and this is the which key description and the description should just be find recent files I think that is plenty descriptive enough let me do a colon W space H R R Alpaca doesn't need to install anything, but now space FR for find recent files does give us council recent F. Now it did not give us a list of recent files. And the reason it hasn't is this is the very first time we've run it. So let's actually open some stuff. So let me do control WV for a vertical split. And now I'm going to do space period for find file. And I'm just going to open some stuff. Let's do the early init space period again. Let's do the init.el. I'm just opening some files. That's all I'm doing. Space period. Let me go back to config.org in this buffer. Now let me do space fr. I'll do it in this frame here, space fr. And now you can see I actually get recent files suggested here. So that will be one of the key bindings that you will probably use all the time. Let me close that, that frame there. So that's probably the two most common key bindings I use in Emacs are the find file commands and the find recent file command. So find file, remember space period, when you basically gives me a, a little file manager, a little dear Ed buffer almost right down here in the mini buffer where I can quickly search for a file. So that's if, if you didn't work on a file recently, do space period for find file. If it's something you've recently been in, space FR for find a recent file. Now, one thing that kind of bugs me with standard GNU Emacs out of the box is it does not manage 
uh, your splits, your windows, the way Vim does. Let me open up like three windows. There's no way for me to move the file that's open in this window to this window or then to this window or going back in the reverse order, you know, kind of like how you would manage your windows and a tiling window manager. Now Vim actually has this kind of functionality. You can, you know, have however many splits in your window and you can actually move them any direction you want and you swap the, the contents of each little split. And, you know, there is a hacky solution to this that I found and I've actually used this in the past and that is, let me switch over to my web browser, this code over on the Emacs wiki called buffer-move.el and all of this is, other than the comments, is four functions. You can see define buff move up, move the buffer up, right? So if it's below a buffer, it'll move it up above it. And then we've got define buff move down, define buff move left, and finally define buff move right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. I don't need all those comments at the top, but I'm just going to copy that code and that will add this functionality to where I can basically rotate through the buffer stack, if you will. So let me get back into my config. I'll zoom out a little bit here. And since it's called buffer move, I'll put it right after all the icons. So create a new top level header, buffer move. I'm going to go ahead and paste this. Now I've actually removed a lot of the comments because there were a ton of comments in that code for buffer move. And I removed one line of actual code that is not necessary. If I go back, the very last line here was provide and then single quote buffer dash move. Now that is great if you're having this as a separate elisp file that you're sourcing because it is essentially buffer move is a program. But in this case, I'm just adding it directly to my config because it's already in the config. I don't need that provide buffer move line. So I didn't add that. But now that we've got this, let me do a colon W for right space HRR to reload our config. And then alpaca didn't need to do anything. Space BP for buffer previous. Now if I do a meta X, now the name of these functions are buff dash move dash direction. So buff dash move. Yeah, there's buff move up, left, down, and right. Now we just need to add key bindings for these. So I'm going to go back up to the general key bindings section. I'm going to add a block for window movements. So this will be key bindings that will begin with W. So I've added this new block that will start with W and you can see W ignore. So if I do space W, it won't actually run a command, but you will actually get a suggestion with which key and you will see it is for Windows related programs. And you can see I'm going to do space WC for close window. So instead of control WC, the standard Vim binding that uses control, we're going to do space WC for close. Instead of control WV for vertical split, which is the standard Vim binding, we're going to do space WV. Space WS will do the horizontal split instead of control WS, like the standard Vim bindings. You see where we're going with this, but these are standard evil commands, right? Just standard evil window commands. You can see window motion. So this is moving focus. Let me show you this. So let me do a colon W and let's space HRR to reload this config so that these key bindings actually work. Now space BP for buffer previous. Now space W V for vertical split. We get our vertical split here. Let me change to a different file. So it's obvious what we're working with. Here is our early init.el. You can see space WH will move focus to the window left. So we're already in the right window here. So if I do space WH, I am now in the left window. If I did space WL for moving right, I'm in the right window. And you can always just do space WW to move focus. Space WW moves back. And that's the standard evil window next command. So it's always going to go to the next window in the stack, space WW. And of course, J and K will move down or up. But what I really wanted is I wanted those new buff move commands. So these are going to be space W and then capital HJKL, depending on 
where you want to move. So this isn't moving focus, this is moving the window. For example, I'm in the right window over here. If I did space W and then capital H, it actually moved that window over to the left. If I did space W capital L, it moved that window back to the right. Space WC will close a split. Now we've really got our window management set up here right and when people talk about living in emacs and emacs is practically its own operating system or it's its own window manager in some cases which you can actually use emacs as a window manager part of the reason is because you can do so much with these splits uh, these splits are essentially like your windows in a tiling window manager and once you have it set up to where you can quickly navigate through them switch focus or actually move the windows around so now we're really getting somewhere here. The next thing we need to set up is shells and terminals because being an Emacs, it's not just you're working on text files as a text editor, you're going to be doing a lot of command line oriented stuff and there are shells and terminals that are built into Emacs and there's some third party shells and terminals that you could also install as well. So I'm going to go to my reload Emacs section here which is just our custom hot reload function that our little hacky solution from before and the reason I'm going there is because I think it makes sense to add shells and terminals just because of alphabetically and we're gonna have some second level headers we're gonna do something with the E shell we're gonna do something with V term then I'm gonna install a program called V term toggle as well. So what are these? E shell is an actual shell. It is an actual shell like the bash shell except E shell is written in Emacs Lisp. All the functions, there's a lot of built-in functions, a lot of your like standard GNU core utils that you would run in the bash shell. E shell has a lot of those functions too, but they've been rewritten. Most of them have been rewritten using Emacs Lisp. E shell is a really unique and powerful shell. It's something you should explore eventually if you're an Emacs user. Now what VTerm is, VTerm's just a terminal emulator. Your standard run-of-the-mill terminal emulator that runs inside of Emacs. So you'd actually get a split and VTerm, the terminal emulator, will run in that split. Uh, what shell you run in VTerm is entirely up to you. You could use Bash, Fish, ZSH. Uh, we, we can actually configure VTerm to uh, tell it exactly what shell we would prefer to run. And VTerm Toggle is a third-party package that gives us the ability to toggle on and off a VTerm. You know, so we'll have a key binding that, you know, I'm going to do space TV, because T are my toggle bindings, right? Space T, V for toggle V term. And that V term will appear in a horizontal split at the bottom of the screen. When I do space TV to toggle it back off, it just goes away. It's going to be really neat. So let me go ahead and add some source code blocks here. And I went ahead and added some comments as well. But under the E shell heading here, uh, the first thing I wanted to do is use package E shell dash syntax dash highlighting. You guys can probably figure out what that particular program will do. It's going to give us syntax highlighting in the eShell. That is essentially all that does. The config is turning on eShell syntax highlighting global mode. Next up is I have this block of code here for set queue. Remember, set queue assigns uh, values to variables. And I have about eight different eShell related variables that I'm assigning values to, including eShell RC script. So Every shell has a config file, right? Bash has the bash RC. ZSH has the ZSH RC. So eShell RC script is where is your eShell config? And I'm going to locate it in a directory called eShell slash name a file. I'll call it profile. That's typically how you do this. So if I do space WV for a vertical split and I do space period for find file, what I need to do is here inside .config slash emacs, I need to create a directory, eshell, and then slash name a file, profile. And here you could add whatever configuration options you want for the eshell. I'm going to do one that I add to all of my shells. You guys have seen me. If I switch to a different workspace, I'll go to this workspace. If I launch my terminal, which runs the fish shell, you can see I get color scripts, running that's my own uh, package color scripts that that I've got packaged up and I run a random one every time I launch a new terminal and that's just run with the command color script space random
So I have that line in my bash RC, my ZSH RC, my config.fish. I'm getting a message here in the mini buffer. Does it, it's telling me that path to this file, eshell slash profile. Do I want it to actually create the directory eshell? Yes. Uh, and then if I close this window space WC for window close, you can see eshell also has its aliases file, kind of like bash has an aliases file. You can locate this anywhere. I'm going to put it in that eshell directory once again, slash name of file will be aliases. Well, let me do space period for the find file command. I'll go into eshell and I'll create aliases. Then I'm gonna just paste this here. I'll zoom in a little bit, but aliases for the eshell are very similar to how you would set them in other shells. You can see I'm gonna alias ff. So if I type ff in the eshell, it's actually going to run the command find file dollar sign one. So if I give it an argument, so if I do ff dot bash rc, it's going to run the find file command on the dot bash rc essentially. And of course, I have other standard kind of shell aliases like all my ls aliases. I have some Doom Emacs aliases here. Uh, I was using these for Doom Emacs. And some, this is not a Doom Emacs config. I will remove those. You can see I'm going to alias the command merge to actually merge the .x resources file, yada, yada, yada. So I'm going to colon w to write that space bp for buffer previous to get back to the config. And then some other standard uh, settings for the e shell, such as the history size, the maximum lines in the buffer, etc. Next up is the vterm section. The vterm section is really easy. Use package vterm. So use package install vterm. Once vterm is installed, we can run it by doing a meta x vterm, or I'll set a key binding to launch it. The only configuration option I really want to add, and I actually should put this inside the use package block here. I probably should do. Uh, a colon config and then set shell file name slash bin slash fish and then v term max scroll back will be 5000 lines so yeah that should work for us i understand why i had this outside of the use package block because this variable shell file name actually is not specific to v term it's for all the uh, terminal emulators that are available in emacs and there, there's a bunch so that would have set the default shell for any of them to be the fish shell. But in this case, I'm probably only ever going to use vterm when I need a proper terminal emulator because it's really the best one inside Emacs. So, And then finally, we're going to install vterm toggle, and that's use package vterm toggle, and after vterm. So vterm has to load before vterm toggle can be loaded. That's pretty obvious why that's the case. And other than that, we've got some configuration options. I just ripped this straight from the vterm toggle GitHub. Nothing to see here. Uh, if you wanted to play with some of the, these settings, you could adjust the window height. For example, I'm going to set it to 0 0.3, so it'll be 30% uh, of a bottom split, if you will. So assuming I have all of this code correct, I'll zoom back out. So that was all the code for eshell, vterm, and vterm toggle. I'm going to do a colon w to write and then space hrr and hopefully the config reloads without errors. I'm going to install a few packages for us. It's asking us do we want to compile vterm? Y for yes. All right. And then space bp for buffer previous and let's space ww to get over into the window where we compiled vterm space wc space wc to close that window it doesn't look like our uh, key bindings are working in this window with control wc work yeah so now that we have that let's first check on the e shell so space wv once again to get a vertical split i'm going to do meta x and just type E shell and this is the e shell and you can see our config file our e shell profile file works just fine because remember i added color script random right and we get that are my aliases working yes that's my ls command right that's i'm not crazy about the color scheme but you know we'll deal with that at another time but the e shell does appear to be working if i escape to get into normal mode and space wc to close that window it goes away now let me do a meta x v term there is the vterm terminal. It's a standard terminal emulator. The shell it's running is the fish shell, so it's using my fish config uh, I to get into insert mode. And there is my ls command, which is aliased as well. Let me escape, space wc to close. And now let's check on vterm toggle. So meta x vterm dash toggle. And it toggles vterm on. If I do a meta x and 
vterm toggle again. Now it hides the vterm, right? It goes away. So let's go ahead and add some key bindings for eshell, vterm, vterm toggle. I'm going to do a GG to get to the top of the document, and I'm just going to click on general key bindings to get to the key bindings section here. Zoom in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of important E shell key bindings, even though space E was evaluate, right? It's actually, we're going to add some E shell uh, key bindings with E as well. So actually we'll do E shell slash evaluate. So these E key bindings will either be E shell commands or eval commands and the two e shell commands I'm going to add is space es will now launch the e shell because we'll use e shell enough it just needs a key binding to where I can quickly open it and then I'm also going to do space eh for council remember council was part of ivy and it council has a e shell history command which loads the e shell history kind of like your bash history or your fish history I'm going to do space eh for E shell history. And then for V term, it's going to be the V term toggle command. So I had T for all the toggle key bindings. I'm going to do space TV for toggle V term. And let me do a colon W space HRR to reload our config. And now space BP for buffer previous. And let's see if space ES launches the E shell. Space ES takes us to the e-shell and it's that buffer is still open from before because I didn't kill that buffer remember I closed the e-shell window the e-shell buffer but I didn't actually kill it so we can always come back to this buffer space bp for previous buffer now let's check out the e-shell history key binding so let's actually go to the e-shell to actually get the history so space es gets us back to the e-shell buffer space eh list the history there's only one command we've ever run in the eShell. That was the ls command that I ran earlier. So that's the only thing in the eShell history right now. So uh, let me escape to get out of that. And now I'll do space bp for buffer previous. And finally, let's do the toggle vterm command. Space tv toggles vterm on. Space tv toggles vterm back off. And remember, evil mode is running in the e shell and the v term so you do have to type i to get into insert mode to actually type your commands and then you if you want to close buffers or move things around escape to get into normal mode to do things like space wc to close the window and finally one last thing i want to do one of the most important things people have been asking is you know about theming so let's go ahead and talk about theming for emacs so the easiest way to theme your emacs is actually to use the theme creator I'll link to this github but theme creator it's this is the source code for a website but go to the website and here you can go ahead and fill in some colors and at the end it will actually generate the elisp code the elisp color scheme for you and that's kind of what I did I use the theme creator uh, if you want to you can start with some samples so you know, start with a color scheme that you like. Maybe you like this really light color scheme here, but you can play with the values. And when you think it's just right for you, then do theme download and it will download that theme. And you name it some name dot el for e lisp. So I've already done all of this off camera. I've actually worked on a, a theme for a couple of hours uh, a few days ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a theme section. Probably should go right before which key, right? Alphabetically. So I'll just paste this here. Once you've created your elisp file or your theme, what you want to do is this simple block of code. Add to list custom theme load path. So where are all your Emacs color schemes, all, all the themes? I'm going to put them in .config slash Emacs slash themes. And then the next important line is load dash theme name of theme without the .el, right? Even though the file itself will have el. So I created my file. It's called dtmax.el. That's my color scheme file. So let me do space period for the find file command and go into .config slash emacs slash themes slash dtmax dash theme dot el. So oh, I named this file dtmax-theme.el, and then we've got some licensing information. This was auto-generated from the theme creator, the Emacs theme creator, which I linked to here in the comments. But it gave me this very rough outline of some default color settings that we could play with, right? It's a very lengthy file, actually. And this is 
uh, much smaller than probably it will eventually be because as you install more and more Emacs programs, you're going to want to theme them as well with various colors. They'll have color variables within each of the programs. So org has a lot of color variables. The mode line will have a lot of color variables, yada, yada, yada. And uh, if you actually wanted to see what these colors are, we should actually install a package called rainbow mode because that's one of the most important packages that I love to install. Rainbow Mode will take any hex color value and actually show you the color of it as the background. So I'm going to scroll up. I'll create a section for Rainbow Mode. I'll put it right here above Reload Emacs. Space that out a little. Get rid of that line. So Rainbow Mode, uh, this here, Use Package, Rainbow Dash Mode, and then Colon Hook, Org Mode, and Prog Mode. So anytime I'm in an Org Mode document, Rainbow mode should be turned on anytime I'm in a programming mode document, like an ELISP file. Rainbow mode should also be turned on. So, so colon W and then space HRR to restart Emacs or reload it and space BP. Well, here is my theme, right? So it reloaded Emacs using my color scheme. It did not launch rainbow mode, but I could turn it on manually, assuming it installed it. It did. There is rainbow mode turned on, so you could get the hex values here. And essentially what you're doing here is you're assigning these variables, you know, foreground, one, two, three, four, five, six, background, one, two, three, four, whatever it happens to be, uh, built-in keyword constant comments. So this is for your programming stuff, right? You know, keywords should be one color. Comment should be another com color. Function name should be another color. A variable name should be a different color. You get the idea. You got a couple of warning variables. And then you can go in the actual code here. Let me close that window and just change what you want to change. For example, I wanted my top level org headers, so org level one, I wanted that to be colored as the built-in color. So if I go back to these variables at the top of the page, one of them is built-in, right? So that is this blue color, so space BP, or so that took me to the completions buffer. That's not where I wanted to be. Do find file config.org. You can see my org level one headers are that blue color. You know, and I set my uh, second level headers to be a green color, yada, yada, yada. So. That is the theming. Uh, again, I, we could go into a lot more detail on that, but for sake of time, I would suggest having one auto-created for you with the theme creator. Uh, start with some generic theme that's already been created, modify it to your needs, and then download the file, put it in .config slash emacs slash themes, you know, put it in that directory, and then just make sure your config file points to that theme. So I go to the theme section here load theme, name of theme. And the name of theme, by the way, we should talk about that. So let me go back to the dtmax-theme.el file. Uh, where is that name of theme? If I go to the end here, you can see provide-theme dtmax. So even though the file name is dtmax-theme.el, the name of the theme when you are actually loading it. I'm going to just shorten it to DT Max. So that is how that works. And I had a few other things I wanted to cover on this video today, but I think I'm going to have to wait on those because this video I know is going to run very, very long. We've already went on forever on this video, but we got a lot done with council and IV and key bindings, shells and terminals, including being able to toggle VTerm on and off. And of course, we got our custom theme working as well. So I'm going to go ahead and upload the config. I'm going to go ahead and put this on my GitLab over at gitlab.com slash dwt1 slash configuring emacs. Look for the configuring emacs repo and you'll be able to find these configs as well as my example theme here that I spent a couple of hours creating. So, and you can see it's mostly uh, kind of dark blue greenish kind of colors, which are kind of easy on my old eyes. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe James Max and my homies too bald, Matt Mimmit, Mitchell Paul, Royal West, Armor Dragon, Bash Potato Chuck, Commander Angry, George Lee, Marshall, Methos, Nate, Ur, Jan Paul, Peace Arch, Door, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland Tools, Devler, Willie, and Zenibit. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this third video in the Configuring Emacs series would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're 
you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about free and open source software like Emacs, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace. Now this thing's starting to look like a real editor.